Angel. Angel, good afternoon. Do not run for president, okay? We might have a problem. We might have a problem, okay? So just uh, just just vote. Tonight, the judge in Donald Trump's Georgia election case scheduling a hearing on allegations that District Attorney Fonnie Willis is romantically involved with the lead prosecutor in the case, a man named Nathan Wade. At issue is whether the money she paid Wade for working on the case was then used to fund their lavish vacations together. So then Fannie Willis has been paying her secret lover to go after Trump? You can't make this stuff up. So, who is Fannie Willis? Well, Fannie Willis is the district attorney of Fulton County. Now, she is the prosecutor that's pursuing charges against former President Donald J. Trump in the election interference case of 2020. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the prosecutors and investigators who have worked diligently on the investigation of criminal attempts to interfere in the administration of Georgia's 2020 presidential election. Today, based on information developed by that investigation, a Fulton County grand jury returned a true bill of indictment, charging 19 individuals with violations of Georgia law arising from a criminal conspiracy to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election in this state. The indictment includes 41 felony counts and is 97 pages long. Please remember that everyone charged in this bill of indictment is presumed innocent. Specifically, the indictment brings felony charges against Donald John Trump, Rudolph William Louis Giuliani, John Charles Eastman, Mark Randall Meadows, John Chibro, Jeffrey Clark, Jenna Lynn Ellis, Ray Stallings Smith III, Robert David Cheeley, Michael A. Roman, David James Schaefer, Sean Micah Tresher Steele, Stephen Cliffgard Lee, Harrison William Prescott Floyd, Travion C. Cootie, Sydney Catherine Powell, Kathleen Austin Latham, Scott Graham Hall, and Misty Hampton, also known as Emily Misty Hayes. Now, at that press conference standing next to Fannie Willis is Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. Now, on November 1st, 2021, Wade was hired by Fannie Willis to lead the Trump election case along with two other local lawyers. Now, they were known as special counsels. They're essentially outside contractors used to help the DA when a case gets too big for the office to handle with its current staff. Now, after being hired as special counsel, the next day, Wade filed for divorce from his wife of 24 years, Jocelyn Wade. And we suspected a lot of this came from divorce filings from Nathan Wade's case, which he filed uh, just a day after he was given this job as special prosecutor. So we tried to get them, because that report uh, that was filed on Monday includes no concrete evidence, but this was all we could find. When we went to the clerk's office in Cobb County Superior today, this was just it, the single piece of paper saying that his divorce case has actually been sealed since February of 2022. Attorneys today tell us that is highly unlikely for divorce cases. Now, Nathan Wade had very little experience when it comes to felony prosecutions and RICO cases. Wade was a municipal judge who mostly dealt with traffic tickets and running a private practice focusing on family law and contract disputes. Our Fox News research department found no evidence he has ever prosecuted a felony case. Yet, Bonnie Willis picked him for arguably the biggest case in her career. But even with that lack of experience, Wade was paid a lot more than the other special counsels. Public records obtained from Fulton County show the amount each were paid differed substantially. 
Records indicate the DA's office paid Special Prosecutor John Floyd's law firm, Bondurant, Mixon, and Elmore, close to $73,000 between 2022 and 2023. Special Prosecutor Anna Cross's law firms, Cross Kincaid and the Cross Firm, were paid a total of roughly $90,000 during the same years. Over the same time period, Fulton County records show the DA's office paid the law offices of Nathan J. Wade more than $650,000. So, a local lawyer with no experience in felony prosecutions is picked to handle one of the biggest cases in prosecutorial history? It does seem strange. But now, let's fast forward to January 8th, 2024. See, a motion by a lawyer named Ashley Merchant. Now, she represents Michael Roman. Now, he's a former Trump campaign staffer who's being prosecuted by Willis along with Trump for the election interference. Now, the motion claims that Willis has an inappropriate re romantic relationship with Nathan Wade and a whole lot more. All right, so let's go over the motion. First, they claim that Willis and Wade were lovers and that they went on extravagant vacations together, funded by the money that was paid to him from the district attorney's office to prosecute Trump. In this new court filing obtained by Atlanta News First, Michael Roman and his attorneys are accusing the Fulton County DA, Fonnie Willis, and special prosecutor Nathan Wade of having an inappropriate and romantic relationship and that the two benefited from it. The suit claims Willis and Wade took lavish vacations together and that he used part of his salary from the DA's office to travel with Willis. Roman's attorney claims they discovered that the two went on trips together, quote, outside of court filing. Now the reason why all of this is a little strange is because Fanny Willis was a champion of not dating in the office. She said that she would not tolerate supervisors dating people who they had to supervise. And lo and behold, the allegation is she, Fannie Willis, the supervisor, is dating someone else. Listen to what she had to say in the past. Um, it is saddening to me if young women felt like they came to work and they were one, even judged for being a woman, but two, if certainly they felt uncomfortable within the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, that will not be something that is allowed on my watch. Um, supervisors under my leadership that are not encouraging and building up my staff will not be supervisors long in my administration and um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me <laughs> let me just say that um, you know we are at a place in society where things happen in people's relationships husband and wife sometimes there are outside relationships I don't think that that's what the community is concerned about although there you know there might be a, a moral breaking in that I think that what citizens are really, really concerned about is if you chose to have inappropriate contact with employees. I mean, there's nothing that I can say on it other than it is distracting. Um, it is certainly inappropriate for the number one law enforcement officer in the state. Um, and it just, it, it really, really saddens me. And it will be very unfortunate if the taxpayers of this community have to pay for any of those lawsuits. Next, the motion claims that Wade is not qualified. It claims that he doesn't have the necessary experience to handle a complex RICO case or any felony case. New allegations laid out in a brand new court filing are threatening the very existence of the historic Fulton County election indictment. Despite numerous attorneys with ample experience prosecuting RICO cases, the filing reads, Willis chose to appoint her boyfriend, who has little to no experience trying felony cases. That man is Nathan Wade, a private defense lawyer. In a statement, an attorney who represents Trump co-defendant Michael Roman denied race playing a role, writing, if anybody doubts our claim that Nathan Wade is inexperienced, Ask him how many RICO cases he has handled. Ask him how many felonies he has tried. Now, to be fair, the document doesn't give any concrete proof for any of these accusations, only mentioning sources with knowledge. Now, that raises concerns about how Willis hired Wade and has represented the DA's office in a pretty bad light when it comes to these court proceedings. Yeah, guys, first off, we want to say we've been on this for a bunch of days now. The accusation that Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade had a relationship with DA Fonnie Willis is explosive, but so far unproven. The court filing making that allegation contained no concrete proof, so we're keeping our attention on the money and documents we can independently corroborate. We spent the last 24 hours looking through Fulton County payment logs 
and discovered records suggesting Wade was paid substantially more than two other special prosecutors on this case. So let's recap. Wade gets hired by Willis. Then he has no experience with RICO cases or it seems like felony prosecutions. He gets paid six times more than the other special prosecutors. And the day after Willis hires him, he files for a divorce from his wife. It does sound fishy. Now, if that wasn't enough for you, Things get a little crazier because Wade's ex-wife, Jocelyn Wade, subpoenaed Willis and served her just hours before the motion to disqualify Willis in the Trump case was filed. A loan document indicating special prosecutor Nathan Wade's divorce case is sealed from public view is all we could get from Cobb County Superior Court. On Wednesday, reporters trickled into the clerk's office trying to get a hold of the divorce documents that could confirm the shocking allegations filed by a defendant in the Georgia election indictment. Divorce proceedings are a highly unusual thing to seal, multiple attorneys told Atlanta News First. But the divorce paperwork seems to be the basis for defendant Michael Roman's filing, claiming his charges should be dropped because Willis and Wade were involved in a romantic relationship while Wade was in the employ of Willis's office and leading the prosecution of the indictment. Also this week, District Attorney Fonnie Willis was served a subpoena to testify in Wade's divorce case. And I'm pretty sure that she feels she has nothing to hide, so she's going to go ahead and testify. Attorney J. Edward Chip says whatever Willis says in her testimony could be used by Roman's attorneys to fight his charges. I think it's a creative legal maneuver. Uh, you don't see this every day in which a person says this person had a romantic relationship, so therefore the uh, case in chief is invalid. But hey, if it works, it works. So it seems like something strange is going on. The wife subpoenas Fannie Willis to come testify to the divorce case, and then a couple hours later, this motion hits the criminal case saying that she should be disqualified because she's sleeping with the woman's husband. Uh, it all, it's all very coincidental. But Fannie Willis hit back. The first thing that she did was, this surprised me, she pulled out the race card. I appointed three special counselors, is my right to do. Paid them all the same hourly rate. They only attacked one. Now I have to stop right here real quick because she's lying. She did not pay them all the same hourly rate. Here's the proof. The newly obtained employment contracts between Willis's office and the three special counsels shows that statement is inaccurate. Wade's agreement shows he made $250 for two contracts. One ended in May of 2023, the other in December of 2023. While Anna Cross's contract through June of 2023 shows the same rate, John Floyd's compensation in both agreements is much lower. He made $150 per hour for his first contract and $200 for his second, and Floyd is a renowned expert in RICO cases. Now, I don't know why she would lie about something that's so easy to check, but she did, so here's the rest of what she had to say. I hired one white woman, a good personal friend and great boy. A superstar, I tell you. I hired one white man, brilliant, my friend, and a great boy. And I hired one black man, Another superstar, a great friend, and a great boy. Oh Lord, they gonna be mad when I call them out on this nonsense. First thing they say, oh she gonna play the race card now. But no God, isn't it them who's playing the race card when they only question one? Isn't it them playing the race card when they constantly think I need someone from some other jurisdiction in some other state to tell me how to do a job I've been doing almost 30 years. So now after that public statement, Willis then attacked Nathan Wade's ex-wife, Jocelyn. See, Willis claims that she was interfering with the election interference case and that this whole thing was a conspiracy. So Fannie Willis filed a motion to throw out the subpoena in the divorce case. Willis filed her own motion Thursday and in it said it was a conspiracy between Roman and Nathan Wade's ex-wife Jocelyn. Willis had been subpoenaed to testify in the Wade's divorce proceedings and motioned to have the subpoena thrown out, saying it had no basis other than to quote harass and damage her professional reputation even saying it was interfering with her ongoing prosecution of the election case. So Jocelyn Wade then dropped some receipts, showing that Fannie Willis and her ex-husband not only went on trips together, but he paid for it. But today, Joycelyn Wade responded in court, releasing credit card statements alleged to be her husband's that show he spent more than $1,000 for a passenger listed as Fannie Willis to accompany him on trips 
to Miami and San Francisco in 2022 and 2023. Joyce Lynn Wade's attorneys wrote that they wanted to depose Willis to determine the nature of her relationship with Nathan Wade. Jocelyn Wade responded to that, her attorney Thursday, saying, quote, We aim to help Mrs. Wade resolve her divorce fairly and privately, but apparently DA Fonnie Willis would prefer to use her public platform. Clearly, this matter is personal for her. Either way, whether true or not, Thursday, Fulton County Judge Scott McAfee ordered a hearing on the matter, saying Willis had to respond to these allegations in writing by February 2nd and at that hearing on February 15th. Now, interestingly enough, Trump's attorney Steve Sadow said that they're investigating the allegations before they decide whether to support the motion to disqualify Willis or not. In court Friday, Donald Trump's Georgia attorney Stephen Sadow pondered the idea of jumping on board a bombshell motion that claims District Attorney Fonnie Willis and her special prosecutor Nathan Wade were romantically involved. It was filed on Monday by Trump's co-defendant Michael Roman. Neither Willis nor Wade have responded yet, and Sadow said he'd like to wait and hear what they have to say. It's one thing to adopt a motion that brings up a matter of law. This is different. If Trump and other defendants adopt that motion, whatever the court decides will apply to everyone who joined on. That means if charges are dropped or the case is moved for Roman, it would be for everyone else. Now, obviously, after Trump heard about this craziness, he gave his opinion on the matter. So here's what Trump had to say. Uh, you had a very big event yesterday, as you saw in Georgia, where the district attorney is totally compromised. The case has to be dropped. Uh, they went after... I guess 18 or 20 people. They wanted to go after a lot of other people. They wanted to go after senators. She was out of her mind. Now it turns out that that case is totally compromised. In fact, they say she's in far more criminal liability than any of the people she's looking at. So I think that when you look at what happened where they pay a lawyer with absolutely no experience, $700,000, who happens to be her lover or her boyfriend, and uh, then they go on trips and vacations together, very expensive vacations together. And the reason they paid him so much because he was after me. Because this way they can afford to pay him a lot more, and probably passes a certain test. And that's a very sad thing that happened in Georgia. And I would imagine that case is going to be dropped. Every legal analyst that I've spoken to, every legal analysts that I've read have said that case is so compromised now it has to be dropped. Uh, very good people were very badly hurt by that case. It's a shame. Very good people. People did nothing wrong. Uh, they did nothing different than what Democrats have been doing for years and years and years, whether it's slates or anything else that you're talking about. But they were very hurt and it turns out that uh, she profited tremendously on that case. It's illegal. What she did is illegal. So we'll let the state handle that, but what a, uh, what a sad situation it is. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you think Fannie Willis was having fun with the special counsel? Why did he get paid so much money? There's a lot of questions going on here. And what's in those divorce filings? Because divorce filings being under seal, that's very unusual. So there may be something there, but we will eventually find out because divorce filings don't stay sealed forever. It's only for a limited amount of time. If you like what you heard and you're here at the end, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do like great YouTube stuff. My name is Nathan Lawyer, and I'll see you in the next one. Angel. Okay. So, so now, do you want to be a president, Angel? Okay. Or just, uh, you're going to file for divorce? Okay. Okay, Angel. I'll see you later.